Today's video is brought to you by eWin Racing, the best source for gaming chairs and desks for those long gaming sessions. We have a playlist of our eWin chair and desk videos linked in the video description below. Save 30% off of everything using the discount code TECHDEALS. More details at the end of the video. Bob comes in with a question about motherboard compatibility, M.2 slots, CPUs, and what it takes to make them all work. Hopefully this is helpful to many of you because figuring out what you can and cannot do with these things is clear as mud. So he says, can I use all three NVMe slots on my Z590 gigabyte master motherboard? Um, he's got a 10th gen CPU, so he's got the i9-10900K um, with Gen 3 NVMe's only. He's struggling to get his to work. Let me guess, your top drive doesn't work. Now, the reason why I think this is an interesting question is Bob has the Z590 Aorus Master. I have the Z490 Aorus Master. You'd think they're basically the same. It's a minor chipset revision from Z490 to Z590. The changes are tiny. My Z490 supports both uh, the Comet Lake and the uh, Rocket Lake chips with PCI Express 4 with a BIOS update. His, of course, supports it directly out of the box. What's the big deal? Now, really, really quick backstory. Most of the Z490 boards, you cannot use the top M.2 slot with a Comet Lake chip installed, only Rocket Lake. In fact, my Gigabyte Z490 Aorus Pro AX, a very nice 200R motherboard, had a sticker right over the top M.2 slot saying, reserved for future use, does not work with 10th generation chips. If you go through the manual, it's very clear that motherboard had two M.2 slots further down. It actually has three. And if you BIOS flash it with an updated BIOS and you install an 11th generation chip, you can put an NVMe drive on the top slot and it will go directly to the CPU because Rocket Lake now has 20 PCI Express lanes, whereas Comet Lake, Coffee Lake Refresh, Coffee Lake, uh, KB Lake, Sky Lake, all had 16 lanes. They were missing those extra four. So there is no way on a Z490 gigabyte Aorus Pro AX to use that top slot unless you install an 11th gen chip. Zero, zilch, nada, non-functional, does not work. Just pretend it doesn't exist because it doesn't for you. However, when you buy a premium board, you get premium stuff. And on the Z490 Gigabyte Aorus Master, the top M.2, also three M.2s, the top slot, is also wired direct to the CPU for Rocket Lake chips, but it is backwired to the chipset for Comet Lake chips. And so you can use all three M.2 slots on the Z490 Gigabyte Aorus Master on a i9-10900K. I know this for a fact because I have it and I've done it and I've got three M.2s up there and it works great because they double wired it basically and the board simply activates whatever signaling is necessary based on the chip that you have installed. But they didn't do that on the Z590. Well, no, we haven't gotten there yet. They didn't oh. do it on the Pro AX, but they did it on the Master. In other words, the Master is a, more, the Master is a 300R board. Right. The Pro AX is a 200R board. And so they gave the Master a feature that the Pro AX did not have. So what about the Z590 then? We're getting there. Because this is where you have to read your manual and really understand your board. Because it may very well be that he heard from a previous live stream, because I've mentioned this numerous times in over the past year of live streams about the, the Master versus the Pro, because I have both of those boards. And he might have assumed that if the Z490 did it, then the Z590 would do it. Different. And that might not. And so what you have to do, bright screen warning for everybody, is you have to come to your motherboard manual. And right here, I have pulled up the Z490 Gigabyte Aorus Master. 490 or 590? I have pulled up the Z590. Does Intel really have to make a new chipset every year? 
No, but they do. A Z590 Gigabyte Aorus Master. Now, here are the three M.2 slots. And if you look down here, these two slots go to the chipset no matter what. This one is labeled CPU, but the board, the, the slot on my Z490 is labeled CPU as well. So that's... That's true. That may not mean anything. Nope. What you have to be willing to do is you have to be willing to go down to where the M.2s are and to save everybody motion sickness of scrolling, I will scroll, scroll it down. down there. You have to scroll down to where it shows installing and it will actually make a note installing CPU, CPU cooler, we don't need that. These are actually some nice pictures in here. There are actually. Um, just so everybody can see, these, okay, if anybody installs an <laughs> Intel stock cooler on an i9-10900K, don't do you, that. <laughs> you're banned from being a computer enthusiast because that's awful. But these are, these are nice pictures, that's not bad. Installing the memory, dual, ch and just as a side note, this shows, for example, where to put two modules. Put them in the furthest slots, not the closest. That yes. varies board for board. You, oh, when we build RAM. systems, do I not always look at the manual, even if I oh, like yeah. I know what I'm doing? You you read the manual on every build. Do I RTFM? You read the manual, yes. Yes, I read you, the fire truck manual. You read the Friday manual, yes. Here's the you know installing memory, how to install it. They're different. Installing expansion cards, crossfire, back panel connectors. See, now I'm giving me a motion sickness. Sorry. Onboard buttons. Um, I was mentioning on a previous thing before about bio switches. Oh, yeah, there they are. There you can switch back and forth between the bio switches, status LED. This, these are nice boards. They really, really are. Boy, I'm sure. Wow. I know. Isn't How many all... pages in I Do you think most people actually look at all this? No. No. It's just all gobbledygook. Well, when you're dealing, and keep you, in mind that he put a 10th gen chip on an 11th gen board, so he's out of sync. Correct. I understand why he did it. Correct. I don't have a problem with him doing it. Which is why that top slot probably doesn't work. Because he said all the NVMEs are, are uh, Gen 3. The Gen doesn't matter. Gen 3, Gen 4 cross compatible. That's not the part that bothers me. So M.2 connector support, um, do you see here CPU with a note next to it? I do. Okay. Where's the note? Step one, step two, step three. Oh, there, supported by 11th gen processors only. Be sure to use Intel SSDs if you want to set up a RAID configuration on the M2A underscore CPU connector. So you probably cannot install a SSD of any kind in that top M.2 slot. Unless he has an 11th gen. Unless he has an 11th gen. And of course, this is a notice about how you lose SATA connectors the more stuff you put into oh, the various ports. Oh, this is ports. what we were talking about before. Yeah, because there's not enough system board resources to use everything. Correct. So if you're using something, you lose something. So there you, there you have it, Bob. Hopefully that helps. But on the Z490, he could. Yes. So... Now, there is a possible solution here. Ooh, we like solutions. We do like solutions. If I can find a diagram of the board, oh. I was at it. Here we go. His graphics card goes to the top slot. Yes. This slot is shared with this, so if he installs something here, it steals lanes. It'll put that in 8x mode. But do you see how this says PCI Express 4 at the bottom? Uh -huh. This is physically a 16x slot, but it is electrically 4x. This runs through the chipset. Right. Now you do have to also check to see if putting something in here disables an M.2 slot. Mm. Because if it does, then this defeats the point. But you can buy a $7 riser card that will fit in that bottom slot and mm -hmm. let you put an M.2 MVME drive in that slot. That's one way you could get a third drive. There you go, if you need to. Oh yeah, because we've talked about those. Many, many times. But. <laughs> There's always a but. But the question is, what do you lose? What do you lose if you install something there? And actually, now that I've said that, I'm deeply curious as to you. Do you have to go back to that other picture that you were on? <sighs> Probably installing expansion cards, which is 
Connecting cards, no. Back panel connectors, bridge connectors. The only reason I'm not showing this as I do it is I'm scrolling quickly oh, yeah, and I would is. give everybody motion sickness. Yeah, it's like out of the corner of my eye. It's enough even for you sitting there, yeah, isn't it? Is. It is, it is, it is. Crazy, isn't it? Yes. And then finding anything in these bloody boards. Well, I hear this is this control A, F thing that you can search. Yeah, but what would you search for? Well, what's it called? Not consistent. <laughs> Not consistent. Uh... I don't see any notes about it. And here's no. the worst part. They won't call it out unless it's an issue. So it may not be an issue on this board. And so if it's not it, well, usually what will happen is somewhere in the M.2 or somewhere in expansion cards, it'll say installing something in the PCI Express 4 slot disables X. And after scrolling through, you really have to just read the whole bloody thing and go through all the pages because sometimes it'll say it, sometimes it won't. Sometimes it'll be in the M.2 section saying, uh, caution your third M.2 slot will be disabled if something is installed in the PCI Express 4 slot. You cannot put something into every plug on consumer boards. You cannot. So take your NVMe drive out of the top slot, buy yourself a $7 PCI Express riser card from Amazon or Newegg, and put it in that. Ewin Racing has a wide selection of chairs to fit all shapes and sizes of gamers, ranging from petite to cuddly, they have something for every type of gamer. Not just sizes, but colors and material options as well, including red, blue, purple, pink, orange, and more, plus cloth and leather choices. We have over half a dozen chair and desk videos in a playlist down in the video description below. We also have a very special offer just for Tech Deals viewers. Save 30% off of everything using discount code tech deals using our link in the video description. We have used Ewin gaming chairs for three years in our office, sitting on them for up to eight hour marathon live streams. They are very comfortable and we are happy to work with Ewin to bring you this special discount and recommend Ewin for all of your gaming chair and desk needs.